Hey, what's up, everybody? D-Mac here again with another uh, video from the car. Uh, this is going to be the first in a, in a series of videos uh, aimed at relationships, um, romantic relationships between males and females. Um, and because I see such a problem with it, I'm actually gonna target the black couples or black males and females, maybe even urban uh, people of color. Again, because I see such a problem here. And for whatever reason, I've had multiple people over the last month or so to reach out to me about this subject so I felt compelled to to share a few words with you and like I said I'm gonna break this up into parts so this is gonna be a series in and of itself because there's so many pieces to this puzzle so I wanna make sure to give each piece its um its appropriate amount of attention first let me say I am not the end all be all. I don't I don't even think for one second that I have all of the answers to these problems. But I do have an opinion, I do have a perspective, and I am an expert. After all, I've been a man for almost fifty years, forty eight to be exact, and I've been in a productive relationship for quite some time, over 20 years. And I believe that I do have some know-how as it pertains to building a successful relationship. Now, for whatever reason, I find that I come across a lot of women um, over 30, maybe even up to about their mid 50s, who constantly complain, where are all the good men? Where are the good black men? Where are the successful men? How come we can't find a man? How come I'm single still? How come it seems like all of the guys are full of shit? And then you hear, oh, all of the black men are either in jail, they're gay, or they're married. I disagree. I disagree. I strongly disagree. And I'll tell you why. There are an abundance of men. But what's happened as of late and when I say as of late, I mean over the last maybe 15 years, 20 years. Women have evened the financial playing field. And in some cases, they've even, they've even stepped up above what their male counterparts are doing financially. So a woman meets a guy, woman has a you know, nice, comfortable position at work. She may be making forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars on up, seventy, eighty, whatever. And that guy might only be making thirty thousand, maybe even twenty-five. You know, but in her eyes, he's not financially her equal, or he's not financially her superior. And as a result that woman tends to look down at that man and that man tends to be apprehensive about getting involved in a relationship with that woman who in his mind is doing better than he is now let me stop you right there and i'm going to i'm going to focus in on this financial aspect because i don't want it to bleed over into the next of the series where I'm gonna get into some really deep stuff in the second, third, and possibly even a fourth video. 
A relationship is not built on money. It's not built on finances. It's not built on who makes the most money. Now understand, I'm not saying that we don't need money to be comfortable. We don't need money to be um, at peace, at ease. Absolutely, we, we have to have money to do virtually everything it is that we do to, to take care of ourselves and so forth. But lady, because you make more money than that guy does not make you more of a man than he is. It does not make you more of a leader than he is. What's happened, it appears that many of us, and I say us, and I use that semi-loosely, many of us have gotten to the place where we feel, or you feel as women, and of course I can't say exactly how you feel, but I can say what I see. He doesn't make any money. He can't tell me how to do this or how to do that. Maybe he can't tell you about how to make more money, but there's an order of things and we're out of order. There's a reason why there's a family structure. There's a reason why there's a family unit. There's a reason why God created it that way. A man is more equipped just by virtue of being a man to handle things and to do things that women should not be doing. Women should not have to do. Now, because of the way things are going, men have, I'm going to say it and somebody may get mad, but you know what? Hey, too bad. Because this isn't going to be the first time that you're mad. And this isn't going to be the first time that you've heard somebody say something that deep down in your heart you know is right. But because it indicts you, you get angry and you don't want to hear it. And you say, oh, he's full of shit. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's crazy. He's stupid. He's tripping or whatever. Man, you've gotten weak. You've turned into a bunch of wimps. I'm going to go even a step further. You've turned into a bunch of pussies. Pardon the expression, but it's not the first time that you heard it and it won't be the last. Men, you need to stand up and you need to be men. Not mama's boys, not wimps, not, eh, I'm just going to be passive. You've got to be men. You've got to be men. You've got to lead your household. You've got to stand up and you've got to set an example that would make that woman want to follow behind you. That would make that woman want to submit. Women, I know you hate that word, submit, but hey, that's what has to happen. But I don't expect you all to submit, nor should you submit to a man that's a wimp or doesn't look like he knows what the hell he's doing. No way you shouldn't. But you should also allow him the time to be a man and allow him the room to be a man and don't step on him, don't emasculate him and make him feel like less than a man. One of the biggest ways that we feel like a man is by having a woman that treats us like one. Let me say that again. One of the biggest ways that we as men feel like a man is when we have a woman that treats us like a man. Now, men, get back to opening the doors for your lady. Get back to pulling her chair out and being a gentleman and sending her flowers at work and running her bath and cooking a meal for her and making the reservations, planning the whole date, plan the whole night so that she feels like you've got it under control and stop being passive. Stop running around acting as if, oh, well, women outnumber men by 10 or 15 to one, so I don't have to do shit. Yes, you do. Because if you don't, you're always gonna be feeling like less of a man. How many women you have sex with does not make you a man. How big your junk is does not make you a man. 
being a man is what makes you a man. I'm going to stop there. Look for the next set of videos or the next series in this grouping of videos. It's coming soon because I've got a lot to say and you've got a lot that you need to hear. This is DMAC, Magnificent Words to Live By, Facebook.com slash Magnificent Words. Um, there's more coming soon. Also, don't forget to grab the book, Magnificent Words to Live By, available on Amazon, and the next two books are coming soon. Thank you. Talk to you soon.